currently walking through the Blue Springs Cemetery here in Blue Springs, Missouri. We're about maybe 15 miles or so away from Kansas City. And uh, today I'm going to visit the grave of Larry Stewart, uh, commonly referred to as the Secret Santa. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I was watching the local news station in Los Angeles, which is where I was born and raised. And on the news, you always hear bad things. Uh, the saying is, uh, bad news is good news. But during this cast, this newscast, uh, they had on a human interest story. And I remember the story quite vividly. It was a story about a man who would go around the Kansas City metro area giving away money. He would give away $5, $10, $20, but mostly $100. He would go up to random people, people that he felt they could use um, an extra lending hand, if you will. And he would just give them 100 bucks. Now, at that time, the news here, every season around Christmas time, they would do a story on him. This man would take out $50,000 out of his own bank account to hand out to people all over the area. And later on in his life, he started traveling to different cities. Now, during the news broadcast of this story, the Secret Santa, which is how he was uh, referred to and he was known as, he had one rule. He did not want to give away his identity. And they respected him for that and they never showed his face. They never said his name, who he was, what he did, so forth and so on. And then he did this for about maybe 25 years. And in April of 2006, Secret Santa was not feeling well. He went to the hospital and come to find out, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with cancer of his esophagus. And it had been uh, discovered very late. And the doctors told him, you have a month to live. Well, Secret Santa was not going to take that lying down. So he made a, a course of action, a plan of action, if you will. So he contacted the news people that had constantly did stories of him. And he says, you know, I've been told that I got a month left to live. Uh, now is the time to reveal my identity. Not because he wanted any kind of awards or... Or any kind of fame. No, he didn't do that. He wanted to beat the odds, but he wanted to tell his story of who he was and how he came to be. And you can't, like he said, you can't uh, sell a book or uh, go around uh, telling your story with a paper bag over your head. No one knows who you are. And that's what he did. He started telling his story. He told everybody, my name is Larry Stewart. And I was born down in Mississippi. I was raised by my elderly grandparents and they were dirt poor. This little kid used to pick cotton, two cents a pound he would make to pick cotton. Uh, just poor and destitute. Uh, his only way out of Mississippi was to play football. And uh, he had gotten a scholarship to a small college. And that was his ticket out of Mississippi Unfortunately, uh, due to a blood clot, it ended his uh, collegiate career. He comes back to Mississippi. He's broke, down on his luck. And this wasn't a guy who was used to, like, begging people for money and what have you. He wanted to make it out on his own. He goes to a church just to see if he can get any help. They tell him, come back tomorrow. The person that usually helps with people is not here today. So for about a week, this guy is sitting, sleeping in his car. He has no money to his name. He has no money to eat. This guy is starving. He sees a diner up the road. 
and he has no money. So he says, okay, I'm just gonna go eat and I'll just pretend I lost my wallet. This guy is desperate. He hasn't eaten in well over a day and a half. He goes to the diner, he gets orders a big breakfast, eats, 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 eats. And then he's like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pretend that I lost my wallet. And then they'll be like, ah, okay, just get out of here. So he's like pretending, you know, oh, my wallet, I, I, I don't know where my wallet's at. And the cook that made him that breakfast, he comes up to him. And he looks beneath the uh, stool where he was sitting at, where he was eating. And he picks up $20. And he says, hey, I think you dropped this. And that moment would change Larry Stewart's life forever. Uh, eventually, Larry Stewart moved to Kansas City. Uh, he got married. He had some kids. Uh, had some jobs. Lost some jobs. And one uh, one Christmas season, I think it was maybe in 1978 or maybe it's 1979, he had just gotten fired from his job. He had maybe 600 bucks in the, his bank account, and he has kids. He goes to a hamburger stand over in the next town in Independence, orders a hamburger, goes to pay the waitress, and something about her forlorn look and her face, he wasn't sure, but when she went to go get him the change, he says, just keep it. And she was like looking at him crazy, like, no, I can't do this. He's like, no, just, it's, that's for you. And the following week, he goes to the bank and withdraws 200 bucks in fives and tens. And he just goes around town <laughs> giving money to people. And that's where it started. And for the next 25 years, Secret Santa, if he happened to see you and you, maybe he could tell you weren't doing too well, this man would... Just give you a hundred bucks. Sometimes uh, he would give you a thousand bucks. Sometimes it would be five thousand bucks. Sometimes he'd buy you a car. Some seasons he gave away more than fifty thousand dollars. And mind you guys, this man never wanted to be identified. If it wasn't for his medical diagnosis, he would have never. You would have never ever knew who is who he was. What his name was. And when he got that diagnosis in April of two thousand and six. He didn't know how much time he had. And then that's when he went into overdrive of, uh, you know, giving money away, uh, going on speaking engagements, telling everybody his story of just how he grew up from being a poor farm boy down in Mississippi. And all of a sudden, you're a successful businessman. Uh, he made his money with uh, in cable TV and uh, phone services. Very, very successful man. And did not want any accolades. He didn't want anybody to know who he was. None of that. He was only referred to as Secret Santa. And he would beat the odds for nine months after that diagnosis. He lived, he lived his life as best as he could traveling the country, spreading his message, just talking about how that man down at that diner in Mississippi <laughs> gave him that 20 bucks. And he later, he later found that man some, you know, 20 some odd years later, and he gives him $10,000. And the, the man's like, you don't gotta do that. You don't owe me that money. He said, no, I insist because you changed my life. When you gave me that money, when you could tell that I, I didn't have anything and you were kind enough, because I know you didn't have the money, even though you're running a diner, you're running a small business in Mississippi, things could be very, very tight. And you looked at me and that $20 that you gave me changed my life forever. And because of that, because of that $20, Mr. Stewart, throughout the course of his life, probably gave away well over a million and a half dollars. We live in a very uh, look at me, look at me, social media, fugazi <laughs> world, where your favorite YouTubers want to be uh, bestowed upon uh, accolades and, 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 oh, you're so great, you're so wonderful. 
they're looking for a pat on the back. Hey, look at me, guys. I just gave away $100,000. Look at me. Yeah, look at you. This is the grave of Larry Stewart. A man whose story I remember always thought about how awesome he was. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. His dream was to help others fulfill their dreams. And let me tell you, this is one of the most touching stories I've ever read about. And I'm probably not even telling a story correctly. Because of course I did not know this man. And But I can tell you. To give away, even though he, you know, he, he he was successful, to give away that much money. You know what I mean? That's that takes that that says a lot about a person. And you know, this story was the reason why I needed to stop back here in Kansas City before I leave and head back down south. Um. Just a remarkable man and and a very kind, loving, God-fearing man. And even though the doctor told him he only had a month to live, he lived for another nine, nine months, and he fought valiantly. But his story is not going to end. His story did not end on January 12th of 2007. Some would say his story is only beginning. What's that saying? It's better to uh, give than to receive? For sure. For sure. Not all of my stories have to have a, a, a bad ending. I mean... Sometimes it's just a a heartwarming story of a man who, but was only a man, one person, but touched many, many lives. And I hope that whoever he helped, the thousands of people he helped all throughout those years, I hope that, uh, I hope that they were really helped by his uh, generosity. All right, guys. Rest in peace to Larry Dean Stewart. This 10-year-old boy, when I watched your story, I never forgot that. I never forgot that. And stories like that, I will always remember. And as I travel, pay homage to those who did kind things to people. Right? Kind things. All right, guys. I am out of here. I will catch up with you later. Peace out.